Yeah, hi everyone, Jason here, Robert Law Miles Australia. Uh, today we're going to run through and do a little bit of a comparison test between Luba 1 and Luba 2. Um, we've received our first Luba 2 machine that we can start testing on, which is great. Um, basically today, what I really want to do is just set them up side by side. Um, we we're hoping to mow some wet grass today, but we unfortunately had a perfectly sunny day today, so no wet grass for us today. Uh, we'll test that on another day, but we're going to do a side-by-side -side mowing test, uh, see what sort of square meterage per hour both machines are covering. Um, we're going to run both machines uh, under tree cover at the other end of this property, uh, where it's got very quite dense tree cover, uh, and the RTK uh, GNSS signal really shouldn't work at all. So it'd be a good test for Luba 2 and its camera system. Um, and we're also going to run them both up and down some slopes up the front here and sort of see if Luba 2's got slightly better slope traction uh, than what Luba 1 has. So we're going to get these things set up. Uh, I'll just going to measure them out to an equal area um, space for each one, um, which will be roughly around about sort of five. 100 to 1,000 square metres each. Um, we're going to measure them exactly the same, set them up and, uh, and let them run. Let's go. Okay, so that was a, uh, it's actually quite an interesting test and we even had managed to get a little bit of rain halfway through the test as you would have seen from the time lapse. So we actually did manage to cut some wet grass for about 20 minutes or so. So that test was, so I mapped out on both sides here and measured out with a measuring wheel exactly 500 square metres. So it was 10 metres by 50 metres long uh, for both robots. Now, the Luba 2 is a 1,000 square metre model, so its top speed when mowing is only 0.4 metres per second. Um, so we match that with the, uh, with the Luba 1 5,000 here. So they're mowing at the same settings. They're also mowing with the spacing of 30 centimetres, so they're overlapping by about 10 centimetres each time they went down. Um, and they predicted, the Luba 1 predicted, uh, I think it was 56 minutes uh, to complete the task, and uh, sorry, 63 minutes I think it was to complete the task. Uh, and Luba 2 predicted about 71 minutes, so it predicted a little bit slower on Luba, on Luba uh, 2 than it did on Luba 1. And it also executed uh, a little bit quicker, as you sort of see from the time lapse, if you have a, have a bit of a closer look, you'll see that uh, the Luba 1 was travelling just a little bit faster and just lapping it occasionally. So. Luba 2 having only a one hour battery in it, he went for exactly one hour basically and then came home uh, to charge. He only got to 84% uh, complete in that, in that area uh, when he was mowing that, um, which works out to, what's that, 400 and something, 420, 400 in that ballpark uh, square metres uh, per hour for, for the Luba 2 at 0.4 metres per second. So that's, at the, uh, that's, the, that's the fastest speed for the Luba, for the Luba 2 1000. 
the 5000s and 10,000s go up to 0.6 meters per second, um, which reduces that time by quite a lot. It's not perfectly even because you've still got the robot's still got to turn around at each end, um, but realistically, you can absolutely get your Luba 5000 or Luba 10,000 to mow 500 square meters per hour without any troubles at all at those sort of settings at 0.6, 0 0.5, even per meters per second, and at a 30 centimeter line spacing. So. Definitely going to get in that 500 square meter range and like I said before, in the 1000s you can probably get that 400 square meters, but that is in a perfectly open square at 50 meters long. So as soon as you start getting into complicated areas uh, where the robot's got to you know, only travel two meters before it turns around and goes around trees and everything else, then it's going to come back quite a lot. Uh, and you're probably looking at something more like 250 square meters per hour for the Luba 1000 in a complex area. Um, uh, like I said, we were sort of blessed with a bit of rain, so I'm actually keen to have a look underneath these guys to see exactly how they went um, as far as the, uh, the grass build up underneath. So I'll just uh, get my camera going here so we can uh, so I can show you what's actually on there. So this is the Luba 1000 um, and like I said, the grass is definitely, definitely wet and it was wet for around about 20 minutes at that time. So I'll just take him off his charger and I'll have a look underneath there and you can see that is quite built up. Um, not enough for it to stop working, but it's certainly all the guards around the side there are completely built up um, and it's certainly built up in the middle there around the side there. It's not completely filled up behind the blade disc there, but if it was mowing for a couple of hours, it would probably be completely built up under there and have no room whatsoever. So let's have a look at the, uh, look at the Luba 2, which I'm ex predicting it's going to be exactly the same, but let's have a look here. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what it does. This is bended in half. So yes, it really is just as bad as that. In fact, it probably this one probably looks just a tad worse, but um, yeah, it's still going to build up pretty much exactly the same as it did. Um, is it going to slightly you know, push it out the back now that it's got that little slope on the back? Probably not. Um, so it's still going to be very much the same um, as, as Luba 1 all the way through there, um, where you're going to need the uh, start recharge. You're going to uh, require cleaning under the robots um, quite a bit. Send both those home. I didn't like it when you bumped into my leg just a second ago. Start recharging. So let them dock themselves back up again. So, yeah, so, like I sort of said, you know, they'll both, so this, this grass for a start was mowed only a couple of days ago with a ride on mower. Um, so it was mowed at about sort of 65 uh, millimeters. We did just have them trimming off uh, all the way through here. So we had them both set to 60 millimeters and they definitely were trimming the grass down. Um, you sort of can't really see it, but it is much neater. Uh, when I squat down and look at it out there, I can see that the area where they mowed is, is definitely a lot neater, neater than it is here, but they weren't trimming too much off at all. They're just, they're just trimming the top. Um, so the next test we're going to have a look at is uh, we're gonna map these, both these guys out down the other end of the property. Uh, under some trees and uh, map them out under the trees and uh, and we'll see how the Luba 2 responds under the tree line compared to Luba 1. And we'll also try and cut them different angles uh, so they sit underneath the tree line for longer. So I'll go and get it set up and we'll go from there. So I've got both these robots set up under the trees behind me. Now Luba 1 I was really unable to get it to actually map up through under the side here it just wouldn't allow me to map it. So what I've actually done is I've mapped Luba 1 on this side where the trees are far less covered over the top of the uh, over the area. And you see Luba 1 over there sort of struggling to actually get around the boundary there. I've got them both set to boundary cuts at the moment and Luba's, Luba 1's on its second boundary cut and Luba 2 is actually the start of his first boundary cut now. It's just coming past me here now and he'll head up. So basically we're gonna, I'll take some video here with, them with the phone so I can show you exactly where they're mapped. Um, but it's very clear to see, obviously, that obviously the camera allows Luba 2 to be mapped where Luba 1 just can't be mapped in the first place. Um, most of this area under here still has some GPS reception, so we haven't been able to actually, the, the cover here is not enough to actually exclude the GPS reception or the, or the GNSS reception. Um, so they're both still using some, uh, obviously, uh, RTK and GNSS uh, RTK correction. So. I'll take a bit of footage of it under here, show you how far under this is, and we'll have to try and uh, conquer the, uh, the the no GPS signal uh, on another video, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so, firstly we'll just go in here where Luba 1 area is, so this is Luba 1 doing his, doing his perimeter laps, but you can see here this area is reasonably open and we've got some tree cover, there's a little bit of sky up through the middle there, and then there's some really tall gum trees on our side here. 
but they've all got just a little bit of light coming through so this sort of area here that we're looking at I would have always thought that Luba 1 would probably uh, would probably manage that okay however when we tried to map Luba 2 and Luba 2 is having some issues here at the moment as well so that's interesting but when we mapped Luba 2 in through here Luba 2 got to about where actually where the, where Luba 2 is there now so Luba, Luba 1 got in here and didn't allow us to map any further on through this pot through this path um, and that's simply because that really is just it is sort of complete tree cover here it is fairly thick uh, still a bit of a bit of light coming through here and there um, but it just wouldn't allow us to map up past this point so and Luba 2 is making his way around he did bump into the fence just over here a second ago so he's definitely definitely not just working with uh with you know without any uh, issues at all and um, he's still using his gps at this point of time i'd say to try and position himself so it is interesting to see you know, what he actually does what they'll actually do with the camera system on the boundaries when it's mowing you know i fully understand that obviously if it's you know if the robot's out here you know mowing out in where it's got good gps signal it's coming straight in it's going to come all the way through here turn around and go back out again no problems at all um, but when it's actually trying to do a boundary cut it's a bit of a different scenario because they really they still they still really do need to be able to locate themselves to be able to do their boundary cuts so it is an interesting interesting thing so just while he's floundering around there i'll show you where the boundary actually does go so boundary goes up probably around about here so then it curves around a little a little way away from the wood stack there curves in around here and actually goes right up to the side here goes all the way up to the uh to the woods there and then it turns around and just, just sits on the side of that edge there all the way around the side here um, but yeah you can see it's like i said there's very little to know i'll bring up uh, i might connect i'll connect onto my phone in a second and we'll uh, and we'll just see what the uh, gps signal is So, yeah, so he's actually got himself right into this corner here, but he managed to get up to this corner here and he did make the turn okay. And he's making this turn here. So he's doing this without any GPS signal at all, which means you can only be using the camera to position yourself or understand where the edges are, which is really, really good to see. So he's trying to go a little bit high on the, on the bank there than where I mapped him. given up there so let's just cross back over to the uh back in here again now i'll just sort of recap what really just happened there now uh, i think you can still see me with the, the camera far out there but basically as soon as luba 2 turned this corner here um, he had no satellite reception at all and then was relying on the camera system to actually go up and around and back again so he made it up he done his first turn quite perfectly uh, but when he turned to the side here he sort of struggled to understand where he should be in this spot here so he turned around here decided to go back this way it looked like he was doing okay then he sort of fumbled a bit and went up the hill a little bit more but he, he worked himself out but i think that was only because he started to get some camp some uh, some satellite reception after that but once you get to this point here there's actually quite a bit of sky out there so i think he managed to actually get his satellite reception back when he got to this point here and off he went so we'll let him do another lap and we'll have a, have another quick look uh, in a few seconds we'll you see how he goes. I think we'll have a look at uh, have a look at Luba One and see where he's at. He should be almost finished in his laps by now and starting to actually do his mowing path. Um, but like I said before, the difference between Luba One and Luba Two is quite significant uh, in regards to what they can and can't achieve under the tree lines. And, Like Luba 2 just did a bit of a correction there. He was just correcting his path after he came out from the trees and worked out exactly where he was. He corrected his position and now he's just starting his second second lap. So you can really see that as soon as even Luba 2 does get into this same sort of scenario where, where the GPS signal gets really poor, um, he still flounders around a little bit like Luba 1 used to you know, in regards to getting in those sort of same positions. So he definitely there's definitely some you know, some questioning in its computing about whether it's going to use you know, the GPS reception or the GNSS reception or whether it's going to use camera and how those two interact with each other. Um, it's a little bit unknown at this point in time, but 
He certainly hasn't stopped and he's managed to get through everything and hasn't lost his position completely or gone outside of the, the area where he should have. So he's done, done really quite well you know, for what he needs to do. So that's that same spot again where he crossed and started going towards the actual defence line. So I'd say that's actually in the map. You know, I'd say that map where got a bit, of a bit of a jagged line on the edge of it where it was matched. Further is where he actually, where he actually loses, loses the GMSS signal altogether. So once he gets around this corner, he loses the signal altogether. So we'll see how he, uh, how he responds this time. previous time without any issues at all he managed to get in and out uh, there without uh, without missing a beat basically and um, like I said we do know that he has no GNS signal up in that section there, so we're yet to trial him on uh, on, you know, on areas that, that we know have got no GNS signal but he really uh, he really has done quite well there you know, to get around you can also see that he hasn't exactly it's not exactly following the paths that he should be as well he's just going off the paths a little bit um, and leaving some, leaving a little bit of grass between the gaps. They, he is on 30, 35 centimetre, or no, 30 centimetre, he's on 30 centimetre line spacing at the moment, so it is quite, quite distant for operating underneath tree line. So from that, essentially, so he's just basically, so Luba 2 now has just finished his border cuts. Uh, I'll show you on the screen here so you can see exactly where he's up to there now. Um, but he's just gonna go bound to the side here, he's actually gonna start mowing this side here uh, to, uh, to start his, uh, his zigzag cut. So, yeah, the transition between camera and, and the GNSS signal, it's not obviously perfectly smooth. Um, it seems to sort of still flounders around when it's got, when it's got GNSS signal, but it's very poor or very weak. Um, it still seems to rely on that signal as well, but we haven't been able to, one thing we haven't done at the moment, we haven't really tested how Luba actually follows borders um, when, he, when he has no GNS signal. So we're going to do that inside the shop actually and actually have him see if we can't have him follow some lines um, that where he's got zero uh, GNS signal to sort of see exactly how that goes. Mm. Um, so in this sort of test that we've done now, it just sort of shows that you know, when you do have a significantly higher tree cover uh, where, you know, where Luba 1 and other you know, GNS controlled devices with no camera system uh, really can't work. Like I said before, I was unable to map uh, Luba in a Luba 1 in this area. I just, it just simply wasn't able to do it. So um, Luba 2 has able to map it. So he's been, uh, been able to get the mapping done and he's also been able to, well, he's gonna get back the other way, isn't he? Um, he's also been able to, uh, to get his boundaries done, done three border laps. Maybe not in the neatest fashion. He didn't actually just do it flawlessly, but he did make it round all three laps without getting stuck. So, so I think that's sort of a, a fairly positive outcome for what they need to do. Um, yeah, look, I, I actually, to tell you the honest truth, when I thought I was gonna set this up uh, under all this tree line and just have Luba 2 just mowing under the tree line where he had very little to no, you know, no satellite reception, I didn't think he'd probably do the job at all. I thought it'd be much the same as Luba 1. Um, and he's not. He, he allows you to map, you know, where the GNS signal is either not very strong or not there at all, which is really what you need. So I'll be very curious to see how he goes when we actually do trial him in a spot where there is no GNS signal getting through. And I thought that'd be enough to actually cancel it out, but it, and turns out it just wasn't today. Now I have mapped under here before with other robots where there is no signal for them, um, but he's managed just, just to hold on to the satellite signal just enough. And, but doing a good job. I'll let him mow the area out here now. Uh, I'm not sure where his battery is at, 40% at the moment. So we'll let him mow this little area out until he, he gets up into the more difficult area. 
and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll do the next test, which will be some slopes. We'll just uh, run them both on some slopes and see if we can't see the difference in traction uh, between you know the Luba One rear tyres and the Luba Two rear tyres. Okay, so the last test we're going to do today uh, with Luba 1 and Luba 2. So Luba 1 here is at the moment because he's got more charge than Luba 2, so we've got, got Luba 2 back on the charge at the moment. Um, is We're just going to mow this little sloped area here now. I'm not quite sure how this looks on the camera, but the little spot over here, for example, on this edge here, that is tall enough, is steep enough for both the robots to actually go out on their on their overturn limit. So they so basically it's right up on that 75% mark. Um, on this back edge over there, there it's actually sitting at around about that 70, 75% as well. So basically we're right at the maximum limit of what the robot can actually handle in the first place. Uh, but secondly, we really want to just see how it actually handles it, how it slips around, and how it corrects itself. So we're going to let it mow, and we'll. Um, we will see what actually happens. I might just make it one lap. We'll just do one perimeter lap so, so we can see it go around and let it mow in between after that. So it's going to take about six minutes to mow, which is not very long. And away it goes. So it's, we're going to mow on an angle this way. So it's going to go up and down that way. So it's obviously making its way to its starting point at the moment. It's going to run over that nice big stick there, box of it. I'll move that out of the way for, as it gets past. Oh, it actually bumped into the stick. Let's just move the stick. So you can see already is that when it's just tried to go around the stick there, it's actually slipped probably almost three quarters of a meter down the hill to actually, before it's actually straightened itself up again. So this is the sort of thing that we want to see exactly how well it actually corrects itself and how much damage it does to the ground as well because this ground is a little bit moist as well which is sort of a good thing it's going to show the damage up quite uh, quite dramatically Okay, so let him run his around there and, and pick himself up again. But yeah, look, the issue, the biggest issue you're really going to have uh, when it comes to slopes is the robot, you know, not holding its grip sideways. So going straight up and down, it's not really going to have too much trouble. Right up to that 60, 70% mark, it's going to be quite fine, and I'm sure they'll go up 80% in the right conditions. Um, but as soon as you're trying to go across the slope or anything like the front wheels, the omni wheels are trying to fall down the slope very, very quickly and then also the rear wheels as well are also trying to slide down the slope. So it'll be interesting to see how Luba 2 does in comparison to Luba 1 once it's done.
uh, certainly goes up and down that hill there, really without really losing much traction at all. Um, and look, that little spot that it just went up, it's, it's no small little slope, it's, that's still probably 50%. So. Okay, we'll let him do his mow and let you guys watch from there. Just show you briefly on this angle over here what sort of slope that, uh, that side really is. Not, again, I'm not sure whether you can really see that very well, but it's, that's, that really is quite steep. So while that's mowing, I'll go and uh, see if I can get Luba 2 back down here again, and, uh, and we'll, we'll try Luba 2 as well. Okay, so Luba 2's turn. Uh, I stopped Luba 1 just a little bit short before he actually finished. It was getting far too painful to watch uh, with him slipping and sliding all over the place, particularly when he's in reverse. So, like I said before, when they're going up and down the slopes, you know, straight up and down, they really don't have much trouble at all, but when they're trying to reverse and get themselves back in a position or reverse up a slope, the traction is significantly less. Uh, and like I said, they can slide sideways very, very easy. So. The, the areas, you know, there's, it, it mowed it down. It didn't miss a lot of grass. There's a few bits and pieces like that piece over there that's, uh, that's sticking up. So it mowed it all probably perfectly okay. Um, spun its wheels a lot. You can see some of the red dirt damage on the side there because we're on a very volcanic soil here. So, um, uh, so yeah, you can see the red dirt coming up there where the, where the robots managed to turn the dirt up. So it's definitely doing damage to the ground. Uh, it's just a matter of sort of how much. So we'll set Luba 2 going. I've mapped him out now. Um, so we'll put him in, a, in exactly the same pattern as what the previous one was. Um, customize that, that's fine. One lap, yep, that's good. Preview, see which way it's actually going to map. Yep, it's mapping pretty much exactly the same way. So it's going to take six minutes to mow. So let's find out. Start working. Okay, so he's going to go find himself his starting point, uh, wherever the starting point for him is for this particular route. Let's see how much Luba 2 spins his wheels. So previously when uh, Luba 1 went up this first slope here, he did it without, you know, without spinning his wheels very much at all. Actually, I think it was almost, almost no traction loss at all when he was just traveling up here. And looks like Luba 2 is similar. Yep, that's, yep, no traction loss at all. Getting that first bit, which is great. Luba 2's got a slight advantage here too, I suppose. The grass was definitely much longer. Um, I have set Luba 2's blades down to, I think it's at 50 mil, so it's actually quite a lot lower. It's 20 mil lower than what, uh, what Luba 1 was set at, so to try and put as much strain on the blades as possible. Uh, previous, yeah, so it's similar to, uh, to the Luba 1 run. You can see he's already gone into a, a bump or, or a blade uh, jam. Oh, through he goes. Gosh, they're powerful little machines. Mm, they really are. I tried to map it quite high on that edge there. It was quite difficult to get him to, to, uh, 
to map on that top edge, but you can see them sliding sideways, same as lever one. And this one here, he slides quite a lot when he gets to here, I imagine. He's, he's, he's trying to get back to the edge now and really can't. So yeah, now, now he's in all sorts of trouble. Back down he goes again. And down to the bottom. So I don't think that was any better or any, or any worse than Lugal 1 uh, as far as how he actually reacted uh, to the slope. So realistically, I don't think you're going to see, I really don't think you're going to see really any differences when it comes to uh, Luba 1 versus Luba 2. Obviously Luba 2 has got the 80% slope rating which is to do with the actual sensor inside the robot. So you just might get a little bit more slope going straight up and down with Luba, with Luba 2. Um, and the traction I assume is better, when it, again when it's going up and down, so it's going to lose a little bit less traction going up and down slopes. Um, but seems to on slopes like this where it's quite extreme uh, then uh, Luba 1 and Luba 2 seem to operate fairly similarly so I'll let the camera roll I'll let the camera keep rolling again um, let him mow this area for you so you can sort of see how he, how he responds compared to Luba 1 uh, and then we'll wrap the video up thanks Yeah, okay guys, so it's pretty much it for the video today. Uh, I'll just run through roughly what we sort of, what we, what we tried to achieve today. So we've done a square meter test uh, to find out whether Luba 1 and Luba 2 uh, were gonna operate about the same and turn at the same speeds. And in all fairness, they seem to work very, very similar to the same thing. They weren't, they, they were very, very close to the same thing. Um, we thought Luba 1 was a little bit faster, but I really don't think that's the case. I'd say it's more to do with the fact that that's a 5,000 square meter model, and we set the setting to 0.4 um, meters per second, whereas Luba 2 was limited to 0.4 meters per second. So it's probably just a bit of difference in the in the so in the software or the firmware. Um, so they're all going to operate much the same. And yeah, we looked at the fact that in an open area, you can probably get about 400 square meters out of Luba 2, maybe maybe close to you know to four to 500 square meters out of Luba 1 in that ballpark. Um, that's maximum. So if you go up to in the once you go into 0.6 meters per second in the Luba 5000, Luba 10000, you will definitely get you know, your 500 square meters per hour in, in an open area, no problems at all. In a more complex area, it could, could be down to half that if it's really complex. And, um, after that, obviously we got a chance to do some wet grass testing, which is great. It actually rained for us today when uh, we really didn't think it was going to. Um, so both robots built up the grass pretty much exactly the same. Um, and I want to just take some, some footage underneath these uh, robots in a second here to show you what they look like now. I haven't looked yet, um, but I haven't cleaned under them, so I want to see how they've gone uh, later on after we've used them for a bit longer in the drier grass. And, um, so we, we then took the, the robots down underneath the trees to see what the difference was between Luba 1 and Luba 2 uh, when it comes to tree cover, which is the, really the, the whole main difference with Luba 2 with its camera system, is that it can operate with, uh, with less or no GPS signal for a, little bit, for a little while. So we very quickly learnt that Luba 1 couldn't even be mapped really, so we could only map it, it was limited to where it could be mapped, because um, if you can't map the robot obviously you can't use it there, so it's a bit irrelevant on how it actually operates. Um, so, but Luba 1 could only do a, a, a slightly more open area with a bit more, bit more openness to, to the sky, uh, whereas Luba 2 was able to go right in deep um, and had a lot more tolerance in being able to set the map up in the first place. So, and it was able to mould afterwards. It did get confused a few times because it's really is, it's, I believe it's trying to work out whether it's gonna use vision or whether it's gonna use satellite signal uh, when it gets really low. So I think it still relies on the satellite signal for as long as possible. Uh, so that's, I think that's where the confusion was, where it, where it got a little bit confused a few times in there as well. But it did mould, it moulded adequately, no problems whatsoever. Uh, after that, we obviously brought them out and put them on the slopes. Um, I honestly don't think there really is very much difference between Luba 1 and Luba 2 when it comes to its slope ability. Um, I do like the tyres on Luba 2 better than Luba 1, there's no doubt about that. Um, and they are going to have a slight amount more traction, but uh, are you going to see a real difference in how it operates? Probably not, unless you're going straight up and straight down a slope. Uh, and if you are going straight up and straight down a slope, you just might get a little bit more out of Luba 2 than you'll get out of Luba 1. But 
in fairness, I think they're both very, very similar. Um, so quickly, I want to uh, just have a record underneath these uh, robots to see what's uh, what's under there, to see how they uh, how they fared with their with uh, with the grass. So I'll drag level one out here for a second, and that's actually quite clear. I'll just take a video under there for you. Um, yeah, that's actually not too bad at all. Most of the grass that was built up under there before is cleared out. There's a fair bit around the edges there, um, but it's cleared out to the point where it's then where the robot's completely operational again. So that really was really quite good. Let him dock again, and we'll go to level two. Let's have a look what level two says. Suspended in air. So Luba 2, very, very much the same. So most of the grass is cleared out, no problems at all. In fact, probably a little bit more grass around the guards have cleared out. Um, a little bit more left underneath the robot, but mostly it's cleared out. So again, much the same. I don't think there's really much, I don't think there's a lot of difference between uh, Luba 1 and Luba 2 when it, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the grass build up underneath the robot. I actually think that yeah essentially the design underneath the luba robots uh, is such that wet grass is going to build up and you will have to clean under it if you're cutting wet grass um, so if these robots were continuing to mow and they had to mow there's about 5,000 square meters of grass here so if we had either of these mowers mowing all 5,000 5, square meters uh, in the wet then i can almost guarantee you that both robots would clog up to the point that you would have to clean them out to actually get to continue mowing but that's that unfortunately is just one of the uh, one of the downsides to Luber is that if it does cut wet grass, it is going to build up underneath the robot. But in most cases, like today, it mowed in the it mowed in the wet and then it mowed dry afterwards, the grass was able to, to clear itself out, no problems at all. And 90% of our customers, 99% of our customers have no troubles with Luber One with the grass build up, but there is the few customers that do. So look, that's really it, guys, uh, for what we want to what we want to achieve today. Uh, more videos to come, obviously. Uh, if you've got any specific, specific questions that you want answered or you know, if you've got anything you want us to test, throw it in the comments below because that's really what I want to do is uh, listen to you guys. What you, what, you want to, what you want to know is what I want to try and, what, what I want to try and learn for you or what, or what I want to try to, to teach you. Um, uh, so we can test anything you like. Just like I said, put it in the comments below and we'll test it for you and post it in another, in another video. Uh, for those of you in Australia, uh, if you want to get in contact with us, email us at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can check out a lot of information on our website, look at www.robotlawnmowers.com.au. And if you want to check out our socials, uh, there's plenty of content we drop all the time on our socials, so TikTok, uh, Instagram, and, and, uh, and Facebook is the other one, Facebook. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.